What up, y'all? Justin Gay. See what this has to do. So after going through that last Q&A, I noticed that there's a lot of people that are interested in getting involved in microgreens. Cool. Today, what I'm going to be doing is um, just giving you guys kind of a brief idea of, you know, just some of your startup costs, more or less just the things that you need to start a microgreen business. Let's get into it. So the first thing that you're going to need, honestly, if we're going in any kind of order, is a structure. You're gonna have something like this, kind of converted over a uh, garage, pretty much into a grow room slash post harvesting room. It only really becomes a grow room in here in the winter um, at night and the sunflower we keep down there during the day. Then we also are now starting to put our trays up there as well. So like I said, like a grow room slash post harvesting room. That's what we do mainly in here. Uh, that's one structure. But keep in mind, dude, getting started, you really don't need anything this big. You can just use like a small corner in your table for harvest. I mean, <laughs> a small corner for a table in your garage or any kind of empty room, spare room. So one of these tables, pretty essential. I've pretty much done everything on one of those tables. For us to use another one. <clears throat> um, structure like outside here, this, <laughs> this will be a structure once again. We had a pretty bad windstorm um, and it just ripped it in half. But uh, we got a new canopy coming up. Um, so you want a structure and in that structure you want to have some kind of rack. We do pretty much everything vertically right here, you know? Um, keep in mind things are relatively tight. And even in even being here in California, there is a certain amount of um, rotation that needs to be done to make sure that you know your greens are actually yeah. looking pretty good. As you can see, nothing's really out here, and that's mainly because the canopy's off. Things dry out pretty fast um, when that canopy's not on. Um, but here's some more racks. Like those racks, these racks out here, those are just little PVCs. You see, I mean, very simple, right, to put together. In fact, a lot of these racks were some of the first racks that I've ever used. They were inside of my very first structure, which was a greenhouse that I bought from Harbor Freight Tool. It was like the little, I think like six by eight, you can get it for like a hundred bucks um, at Harbor Freight Tool. So yeah, a hundred dollars for that structure. Then I built these guys out. I cannot remember exactly how much they cost, but, uh, it wasn't very expensive at all. Um, here's some other racks though too, like the NSF racks. Big thing that you definitely wanna do is uh, get them on casters. All these things are on casters. So you can do this. I'm literally now moving 12 uh, trays at a time. Beats, I mean, the most that I can carry is like four, if I'm lucky. Four is mad sketchy, I don't know, don't mess with four. <laughs> Now one of these whole setups for the, the whole entire NSF rack and the wheels are gonna run you right about a hundred bucks per rack if you get them brand new. But you can definitely keep your eye on like Let's Go, I mean, I'm sorry, like Offer Up, um, Let Go, stuff like that. You'll be surprised on how cheap you can find some of these racks. The taller ones, like the 20s, made it to all have any room in here now. The 20s, um, these guys are $100 just for the rack by themselves. The casters, I wanna say they're close to like $8 a piece. So yeah, you're looking at probably, let's say 100 to about $150 on each one of these racks if you buy them new, but if you can find everything off of Let It Go or Let Go or Offer Up or whatever, um, eBay, whatever, uh, yeah, you're winning. Having these racks on coasters, man, are one of those things that I feel as though they're crucial to have. And I can remember before when I had to just carry everything, it was a drag, dude, yeah. Getting these things on casters are just one of those things that are gonna like make your day way faster. Next thing that you're definitely gonna want is trays, right? A lot of questions about trays lately. Uh, like this one's falling apart. I roll my trays, dude, until they're just nothing, dude. Until they fall back, they're just split, really. Once they split down the front, and down the sides, that's when it's done ski for me. That's when I kind of wrap them up. But anything in between that, dude, it's fair game. Like if these two inch 
trays from a place that's relatively local to me. It's called Farron, uh, Farron Enterprises. I'll get a 100, 100 count case for $76, right? So yeah, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a definite win for me. I'm not waiting, I'm just able to get down there. I'm not sure if you can do any kind of shipping through them. Um, by no means am I getting paid by from them. They're just really cool people. If you wanna hit them up, I'm sure you can probably work out something. And then the, the one in the corner, to be 100% honest with you guys, I can't remember where I got those ones from. I'm gonna be looking at Paper Pot, and I'm not 100% sure at this time how much those cost. Even though this is a renewable cost, um, one of the things that, and the trays to a certain extent are gonna be renewable costs as well. You're gonna have to constantly be buying them. That's if you go with the cheaper trays, right? These trays right now, I can, for the most part, get through maybe a season or two before I'm trading them out. But when you're getting the more heavy duty trays like these guys, I've had these for several seasons, man. These guys are well worth the investment. Uh, again, I was actually able to just go and pick those up, but the place I used to get those from has closed, closed down. Probably should start getting more of these, but it's just a convenience thing for me, so, you know. Soil, that's another one of those I wanna factor in. I go into it a little bit in how much can you make selling microgreens. I'll put that underneath, because we go into like all that, all the specifics about the compost. Um, but right now you can look at right about $35 a bell. 35, maybe $43 a bell and lower. Some people go a little bit cheaper, but I, I, like again, it's one of those things that you're gonna have to constantly be purchasing on a week to week basis, or if you get it in bulk, I recommend getting it in bulk if you do have the space for it. You might be able to save a little bit. It's definitely something you need to keep in mind. Start off slow, man, start off slow. You don't need to start at, you know, what I think we're looking at right about 120 trays just around us, somewhere around there. Uh, one, two, three, four. Pretty close to 100 trays. Um, don't worry about trying to get here right now. If all you need to do is worry about half of this rack right here, and that's the only rack, these like six trays, just worry about that, dude, and go from there, man. Um, that's, that's how I started. I started off with 10 trays. You know what I'm saying? Buy your first set of trays and get started. Another thing too, you know, uh, when it comes to soil, I'm, at this point, I'm just down just to go ahead and buy the bag. It's way easier. Um, I done spoiled myself. For the longest time, I was actually mixing my own soil. Dude, yeah. Yeah, man. It's. I mean, you can sit there and do that. I'm not sure, honestly, that you're saving that much money to be that honest with you. And then two, you're going to be definitely, you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it way easier just to have it mixed and go. I use the Sunshine Mix number four, as well as a Pro Mix, the Mycorrhiza. That's normally the one I normally find. But they work pretty well. I don't get, I get very little molding with those, um, with those uh, substrates. And then two, I can now utilize that on my plot outside. Seeds are another thing, if you guys wanna see um, all that kind of information. I go into a lot of detail on um, how much can I make selling microgreens. Definitely want to have a place where you can wash your microgreen trays. Unless you feel like you need to wash your microgreens, we can get into post-harvesting. Um, maybe we will get into that, but for right now, it's just a place where you can actually wash your microgreen trays when they're dirty. I don't really show you guys this little spot back here that often. It's not, it's not the most appealing look. This is pretty much where we do most of our washing of microgreen trays. We'll soak them underneath here. Right now, I'm working on using our wash water as well as another way to actually soak them. That'd be like the second use. Make bleach water out of it, like a bleach solution, soak those trays. And then from there, like a little table that I made. It's not that clean back here right now. Again, we just had a pretty gnarly windstorm. But we don't really do too much back here for like cleaning anything really other than trays and um, buckets and stuff like that out here. But it's just a table with a mesh screen. Um, then what I did is add a little bit of a, like a liner to it down here. And that catches the water. And then that water runs down here into this bucket here or into this tote right here and it is connected to another pump that as soon as it uh as soon as the water gets to the level it floats this guy up and engages the pump and then i have that just running out to 
my pomegranate tree or whatever it is I want to turn around to. When we're doing stuff with bleach, I just tap it directly into my municipal and send it flying. Um, keep it real simple and plain like that. Making that table, man, just taking that time to make that, that thing is one, probably one of the most used tools on this whole entire plot. Um, it has been for years. That thing has saved me so much time and back, oh my God, not having to bend over, I can just wash everything right there, it's perfect. Can't exactly remember the exact cost for that, but it wasn't that expensive. Really, really simple to make and you will be extremely happy that you made it. If you guys do want to get into washing, you may not need to do it like this actually starting out. You can though. Uh, this is my wash station now. So we have the bubbler. I have videos on, on how to build all this stuff guys. So if you want to go check it out, just look down in the, in the channel. Um, spinner and then another dryer. We started off with, when I first started was actually the three. Um... The three bucket, I'm sorry, the three tote system. That's just the price of totes. Bigger ones like this, actually we used to use these guys. Now as you can see, we don't really use those anymore. They're just storage for transplant trays now. Coolers are huge to do. I got that one from Craigslist. Um, and I think I actually overpaid for it too. I got that for $700, uh, but I probably could have got it cheaper. One of the guys that works here actually does some um, refrigeration work or was it a refrigeration, refrigeration student? And uh, they kind of low key had a bit of a project and fixed a couple of things on, on that cooler. So it runs tip top now, man, it's awesome. Now, if you plan on doing live sales at your farmer's market, the amount of cooler will dramatically decline because now you're not harvesting all, you know, like a whole bunch of uh, microgreens and putting them inside of, uh, inside of a cooler, you know what I'm saying? So, but the cool thing about having at least a region, a commercial region, is that I can put in full totes in here. So that's space. Used to do, I just used a standard um, refrigerator from like your house, dude, like a standard house refrigerator, got it for free. I took out a bunch of the shelves. Doing it that way though too, it kinda it kinda prohibits you from moving as freely as you want to. At least I found um, the day that we harvest, we then had to actually bag or clamshell the product. Because right? that was the only way to actually efficiently get it inside of the inside of the cooler. Now you know, I, like I said, I can just throw in, I can harvest and just throw it directly into here, into my uh, commercial refrigerator. The temperature is going to be cool, everything's great, and then, you know, we can actually bag them and stuff later on in the week, you know what I mean? So, it really, dude, I can't recommend one of those enough, if not just for that aspect, only in time saving. I also want a loading station, I think. This has really helped out a lot. Keep on going back and forth. Yeah, this that right there is our loader. There's a YouTube video out too about how I made this exact one. Yeah, if you check out that video, you'll have a way better idea of how that actually works. But even if you do not use that, you could just make a box and it's a place now where you can actually just load your microgreen trays without having to bend over. You do need a certain amount of strength to be able to get your compost bale up into the loader. Basically, it move, you'll move so much faster. This Everything's from here, you know? I'm just waist height I'm not bending over so that to me is always a win and all we do is for like our two inch trays load this thing up and then put uh, all trays down on this table and then we just fill them up individually really simple again built that dirt cheap that's only a pallet and a couple two by fours what the? Uh, you definitely want a good knife for harvesting. I have used um, some stuff. This is actually a fairly good knife. I got this from actually a cat that sharpens knives for a living. Holds, a, uh, holds the edge really well. This is my go-to for both the, the plot as well as my microgreens. Definitely want a sharp knife. You can do stuff with scissors and be pretty damn fast. Be careful with scissors, however. Uh, be careful with knives. Um, you're gonna cut yourself, so always make sure that there's Band-Aids on deck, I have Band-Aids nearby because um, you definitely need those with these knives. These knives, uh, Target, I think like 12 bucks. You can get that. Couple of one of these, 
you stand a good chance of being able to keep this blade fairly sharp for a while. Uh, you can actually get it pretty damn sharp, but I have another knife, the same exact one, that it doesn't seem to sharpen that well. This one actually sharpens pretty good. The other one doesn't, so I don't know what that's about. It's, it's kind of weird. The scissors, uh, again, you want something that you can be able to sharpen. We get our scissors from Restaurant Depot. Uh, they're fairly pricey. I think they're like right about 20 bucks per. These guys right here, um, yeah. These are Restaurant Depot. Uh, again, you know what, man? I believe the name, if you live in California, especially SoCal, uh, the name of the place that I got this from is called Diamond Edge Cutters, I believe. I found him because I needed somebody to fix my uh, juicer. Randomly enough, that's what the whole place does is sharpen knives. And I got this thing dirt cheap dude i think it was like seven bucks it's a really good knife guys so this sharpens well even with the rinky dink kind of jump off it sharpens pretty damn good so you can get i'll leave a link down below for him as well so you guys can go and check their stuff out uh and then too he runs a service he actually can go out to you guys sharpen your knives or the whole bit uh same thing with scissors so yeah you might be able to look out with scissors there as well uh these guys these are what i'm talking about the ones that can break apart you really want that to be able to happen so you can sharpen them a lot easier you can clean them a lot easier this is the quick cut green harvester with the quick stand this is primarily the main reason i use a one and a quarter inch tray as well you know what i mean it's primarily for this machine and the ability to actually be able to harvest as fast as it does we just push our microgreens underneath there and we can harvest a lot of trays really fast, you know what I mean? We also use this out on the field. Right now I'm using it to just harvest right about 30, like 30 trays. Well worth it, well worth the setup. Yeah, it's well worth it. Although, dude, I'm pretty quick with a knife as well. You could probably get through a knife, and I'm using one of Curtis Stone's old uh, rankings in about 30 seconds. I feel as though, I've never timed myself, maybe I should one of these days, but I feel as though, yeah, when you, you know, with the sharp knife, dude, you can cut through that pretty damn quick as well. This, you can probably do, I'd say, two trays in like, if it's set up right, probably two trays in like 10 seconds, if, you're, if your table's long enough. That's probably the next thing I'm actually getting ready to build for this is a longer table. Put up a whole line of microgreen trays and just push them through. The price of the quick cut is, I think, $539. That does not include the drill. Uh, the drill is right about, I think like another hundred or so dollars. Home Depot has all this stuff. I can get away with not having lights, even though I do have some in the back back there for our winter grow. Now I'm only running eight different lights, all of which I got at Home Depot. There are three footers, very cheap, very inexpensive. I think they're right about $20 a piece. I actually had them now for at least most of them for about two seasons. So, you know, and they're doing the job for microgreens. Although I have used them for certain plant starts to get things started, I don't highly recommend them. Um, at least not the way that I have things set up. If I add more lights to this, then yeah, which we just might. That's another thing that you might want to have. It works out really well for sunflower for us. So I, I, it's worth it's worth mentioning. It's pretty much everything that you need uh, to start a microgreen uh, operation. You can definitely scale this guys. You can make this as big as you want to. Work your way up. Just keep on building. Keep on building. Watch the videos. There's a lot of information down below as to how to grow a lot of these things so you can bypass a lot of just mistakes that I made. A lot of other people have made. Well, guys, just jump on it. Turn them thumb green, man. This is mainly for outdoor growth, so keep that in mind. Dude, I almost forgot one major one. Check it out. This is like super important. A place where you can dump your old spent microgreen trays. Dude, that is like probably more important to find that out um, before you even start. Without a shadow of a doubt, dude, you're gonna have a lot of surplus compost, right? So you definitely need to make sure you have a place to get that off. Now, if you're on acres and you just have a lot of land, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but if you're doing this out of your house, like what I'm doing, that's one of those things that you definitely wanna keep in mind. 
you will be generating a lot, a lot of surplus. We drop ours off to another local farm around here that has a composting program. We can get some of these bags to uh, customers as well. These things are nothing more than gardens in a bag. Man, all these microgreens will grow into full, um, full ass plants, you know what I mean? Keep that in mind. I've actually been to some of my customers' houses that have taken those bags. And it's cool just to see all the microgreens just full grown. It's just really cool. We also use a lot of it on our fields as well. I'm Justin Gay. This is the Seed Design Video. Peace.